Hello and welcome to Mother, Baby and Us, episode 6. Mother, Baby and Us. So last episode we had our very first guest. And I, I'm still very excited that we've managed to bring somebody into a little podcast space and it all went okay. And yeah, it's just really daunting in it because like it's fine when it's just us two. Yeah. Because it's a mess here and everything is what I think, what I deem to be very unprofessional we, because it just looks a mess. Yeah, but she but was we, really impressed. I know I was going to say we think that it's not professional, but like first thing she said was, oh my God, this is very professional. So yeah. we just have very high expectations. That's the problem, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Everything needs to be perfect. Yeah. But I'm very happy with how that episode went. Yeah, I'm excited to see what we have, not see what we have next on next, as if it's going to be a surprise, like we don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Turn up one day, be something sat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just excited to see, like, going forward, what we can talk about and achieve with other people. So if you want to be a guest on our podcast, please let us know. Mm. I haven't got an email address for you. Just go on our website and fill out the contact us form. <laughs> like, a a, like a customer. <laughs> oh, yeah, leave a comment underneath. people like me. Yeah. I'll come on. I mean, you've got to have something relevant to talk about. Don't just come on just to tell me about, you, like, I don't know, what your cat had for dinner. I mean, we just kind of mumble through a lot of the time. Yeah, but we have a plan. Like, it's supposed to be relevant. <laughs> okay. So today's episode is going to be top five tips for maternity photography. Yeah. I'm just going to delve a little bit deeper into that. Yeah. Things that we wish we knew when we first started. Because it took us a while to get into maternity photography, didn't it? Yeah. Um, and it was kind of like just dipping our toe in now and again. It wasn't full on, let's get into maternity photography. So I feel like if we'd known these things, we would have found out love for it yeah. a lot earlier. Definitely. Okay, so first tip I would say is just learn about pregnancy. Like, we've done it, we've been there, so we kind of understand the process of it, but we started maternity photography before we'd had our kids, didn't mm-hmm. we? So you've really got to know kind of what's happening to a pregnant person's body to understand, um, like at what stage you can photograph and yeah i think that that was a massive element for us when when i first started doing maternity photography and people used to like before i was a maternity and newborn photographer and i was like an everything photographer people used to go can you take photos of me like my, my bump and whatever and i'd be like yeah how far along are you and they'd be like oh i'm however many weeks plus something and i'd be like i have no idea what that it means and i'd be like oh okay so you're about six months oh yeah that, i'm sure that'd be fine and like I had, I had no clue what, what stages things happened and how many weeks things were and so sitting down and learning all that made a massive difference to how I run my business for one but like how I shot maternity yeah so so we schedule them between 28 and 32 weeks don't we yeah like uh, we will go to 34 but like we try and get them in before the 34 weeks because it's just a lot safer it is I don't want anything going wrong and I, like we know from experience how hard it gets at 32, 33 weeks. And I had to waddle very early on, didn't I? Yeah, we I both did. I gave out and I just waddled everywhere. So we, you need to be kind of at the later stages of pregnancy to have that nice round bump and it not yeah. be awkward to try and pause with a bump. But at the same time, you can't go too far into it because of everything that happens at the later stages of pregnancy. And I mean, you want to go into labour. No, you had Tobias at 37 weeks, didn't you? Yeah. So I knew I was going to have Tobias at 37 weeks. I told everyone. She did. She was like, you I what? was consultant led and I needed to get to 37 weeks to have my water birth. And I was like, I'll get to 37 weeks, but that's as far as I'm going. And at 37 weeks, my water just broke. <laughs> and I was like, told you. <laughs> and everyone was like, I wonder if to do another. I was like, I didn't, but like, I could feel it in my waters. <laughs> but I'd only, I'd only finished work at 36 weeks. Yeah. So I literally had a week. Of maternity leave, which consisted of me just lying on the sofa with a fan on me, like, oh my god, this is the worst hate we've ever. And then I literally just gave birth. Yes. So if I'd listened to my midwife, I would have had at least six weeks off. <laughs> um, but I think other things that come into it as well, like I struggled massively quite early on with like my mobility and stuff. Um, I just well, everybody told me how, how big I was, didn't they? Like, mm. I just must have been carrying a lot of water because my baby was only like six pound odd. So, um, but it was just, everything was uncomfortable. So, like, bearing that in mind, I, we know that we need to, if we're on location, 
we need to work out how far away from where we yeah. park the car we need to be we need to um account for like things like snacks and and water making sure like sugar levels stay up and you're not kind of you know putting the the mother under too much pressure in yeah. terms of pausing and there's so many factors you need to think about yeah and asking the parents like is there any conditions we need to know about preeclampsia and like just really like specific things that go on during pregnancy we need to know about those just in case something happens like how many times have we no not how many times but like I can count twice off the top of my head where we've been um photographing a client and you've gone are you okay and they've gone yeah yeah, yeah I'm fine are you no are you really okay and you can see in their face they're not okay and then we've just caught them just in time and given like put a load of snacks and water in them because they were going to faint off yeah. like that's twice that's happened because they will not tell you that they're okay no they just want to carry on and and but you've got to be able to notice those those um signs that actually you know we need to take a break for you because they're not going to advocate for themselves you need to advocate for them yeah definitely so going on from that i think point number two would definitely be research posing yeah as well as the health and safety and having all your research with pregnancy um posing is really a particular one for our niche just because it's really difficult to pose a pregnant woman like the balance center balance is all off and they've got a massive belly like you don't get that on any other kind of portrait so um it's great to know how to pose like everybody else but maternity posing is very very particular to that niche it's like you just throw everything you've learned out to the window and you start again and um, people are very uber critical of themselves especially in pregnancy because they've put on weight mm. and they're not used to it so making sure that you know kind of how to position legs and um, how to kind of twist a hip or dip a shoulder in the right place makes all the difference when yeah. you're pausing it's all about the silhouette isn't it and making sure that they look look in their yeah. absolute best that you can get so knowing how to pause a pregnant person is, is massive I think yeah and it does link back to the um the safety side of it that we were just talking about because they are in uncomfortable positions to yeah. get like it's an un- unnatural I would say rather than uncomfortable yeah um because you need to twist in different shapes to it's different ways to get every bit of your body looking how you want it flattering then yeah. um and they can't hold that position for very long like no. it's kind of this is what you're going to do with your body relax until we're ready we're going to count you in shoot 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 relax again and we'll go again when you're ready and that was a very like steep learning curve but once we like that was it was one of them things where we were like oh let's have a look at posing because this is not quite right what we're doing and then something just clicked it was ah no actually that makes a lot of sense and then as soon as you learn that one thing it snowballs yeah i think we've got videos of of, like posing and things on our channel that we've kind of done ourselves just to explain little bits of it because it is one of it's until you know it, you don't like you don't know things you don't know. Like you would never think, oh, maternity posing is completely different until you look at it and think, um, that's not how I would pose if I was having a photo. Yeah. Because I'm not pregnant. So yeah, this And when like how many times have we kind of said, Right, with your toe, bring your leg around you and and people automatically put it to where they expect the leg needs to go. Yeah, and, and like right we right over. Yeah, and we show and we're like, Well, this is where you would naturally want to put your leg. This is how I'm showing you to put your leg. Can you see the difference? Like, oh my God. Like, yeah, mm. I do know how to do my job. Mm. <laughs> and when they can, when they see the difference it, it makes in the photo, yeah, like they can see why we're doing it. Yeah, definitely. So I think that's really important before you kind of, not before, like obviously you couldn't like learn as you go, but it's something that we would try and concentrate on very early on because then it elevates your work straight away. Yeah, definitely. And just knowing that these pauses are something that they can't stay in for any length of time so like having breaks all the way through Mm. that's I think that is the most important part about pausing it's great getting everything perfect but don't try and keep that that client in that pose for any length of time because it's just you're doing yourself a disservice because then they are not going to be comfortable they're going to feel like oh I've had enough now I want to go home they're not going to enjoy this session no and also the like when you do learn the kind of fundamental poses of like this is where your arms and legs and everything should be use it as a building block make it different like we try and advocate for that quite a lot don't we that it's great to take inspiration from other photographers and other images that you see but try and make it different make your own like we'll see somebody like putting leg we put our leg closest to the camera we get have it bent and across 
the, I don't know how to explain this without showing somebody. <laughs> but anyway, we bend in across, across, but then everyone's arms are always the same. So do something different with your arms. Like we always take a lot of inspiration from Vogue and things like that, don't we? Like we try to do all kind of editorial arms, we'd like to call it. Yeah. Like Christy, do a pose with editorial arms and she just knows what I mean. Um, <laughs> make it different, make it your own. And it like, again, elevate it. Yeah. Like not everybody then looks the same. No. And because it, it is a lot of same, same poses over and over again within maternity photography at the moment. And one little tip within that tip is um, if people are a little bit awkward with their hands and they can't kind of pose their hands. Are you voguing? <laughs> without them looking awkward, give them something to hold. Give them a bit of the dress, a bit of the gown yeah. or a, you know, just give them something in their hands and it. <laughs> yeah. We try and stay away from touching bump because yeah. it's a little bit cliche, but like uh, loads of photographers do it and yeah. like it looks lovely when they do it. Um, but if it is one of them things where they can't do anything but hold the bump, just make it work. Yeah, definitely. You can always make it your own by doing moving something. <laughs> Get a fan in. Oh yeah, Get a wind in the hair. <laughs> or just edit it in post. <laughs> Tip number three is definitely invest in your client's wardrobe. Yeah, that was something we definitely held off for as long as possible. Because of how much money you need to buy yeah, these gowns. But they are so worth it. And as much as you can get cheaper alternatives, like we've bought cheaper alternatives, like we've done AliExpress before now and everything else. Uh-huh. And they're not, they're not the same. They're not. Just like bite the bullet. You'll thank yourself in the end. Because your client is expecting to come in and feel like a million pound. They don't want to come in in a £30 AliExpress dress. Like... If you can only all you can afford is an AliExpress dress at the at this moment in time, that's great. Use it for however long you need. But try and save the money and buy that one kind of staple, like expensive dress that your clients are going to come in and go, no, I want that dress because it'll pay for itself in the end because you've got such a high end dress and people will want to be photographed in that dress. Like it'll make you the money back anyway. And if you, even if you can only afford the one, just shoot it all the time and change the color post. Yeah, or, nobody nobody notices. No, they don't. Make it look a little bit different afterwards, and yeah, like we've done that. We've got gowns. We've got our favorite gown ever, and we have bought her in other colors. But they don't do her in every color under the sun, and we want her in every color under the sun. So we just shoot and then change color after. Yeah, put her the color we want it because it it suits everyone. It, it was a, it was an expensive dress, yeah, but it suits everyone. And like the amount you can do in it to make it look different. So like there's a split in it, so you can have bump out, or it, like it's so much material you can cover bump. It's got. A, fabulous train for tossing like it's a beautiful material so it all looks nice and flowy in the um with a fan on and, and the neckline is flattering on everybody every single person so it, like it was an expensive dress but it was an investment that yeah. all our clients go oh i want that dress i seen you got it in green can i have it in green oh no it's still it's the pink dress but we've just colored it oh my god yeah that's fine can i have it in this color instead then and like the fact that they could just pick what color they want, yeah. they don't even care, like they don't care that it's they're in a pink dress and they wanted a green one because they no. just pick it afterwards. Yeah, and then they feel like a million pound in it because in a, it's an expensive, high quality dress. Yeah, because like your client can go to AliExpress or Amazon and pay thirty quid for a maternity gown and go and yeah. have be have photographs with it. That's not what they're expecting. If they're paying a professional photographer. They don't expect to come in and just have something they could get themselves off Amazon. Mm. They're expecting to come in and have something that they can't get their hands on because yeah. these gowns, they're not like you're not gonna have clients go out and pay. Well, I mean, you do, some people do, I suppose, but the average Joe isn't gonna go out and spend three, four, five, six hundred pound on a maternity gown that yeah. they're gonna wear once. Like they're not gonna do it, but they expect to come and see us and wear one of our maternity yeah. gowns. They, I mean, we know, and you kind of tell them if if they mention like, oh my god, this is beautiful. Where, where's this come from, or whatever? You say it's a thousand pound couture handmade designer gown, and instantly they go, oh my god, and they stand differently and in they it. Do it absolutely straight away, and they're like, oh my god, I, I I feel like a princess. Yeah, because they know how much that dress is worth and how like much time and effort has gone into it, and that they wouldn't have been able to wear that for a session if they'd gone to like whatever AliExpress or whatever. Like, they feel like a million pound and elevates their photos straight away. It does. But, like, we are, we are fortunate that we have... I mean, we've done this over a long length of time, so yeah. we've been able to build up enough money to be able to, to build up our client wardrobe. Mm-hmm. And now, everything that we have in there is all um, handmade designer gowns. Like, 
we we don't have the AliExpress and we're very fortunate. But it's taken us a long time to get there. Yeah. But when we first started and we bought that very first dress, we oh were like, what, what was it? Like 360 pounds or something like yeah. that, wasn't it? And like that was discounted on sale. Yeah. Like end of a line or, or whatever it was it was like majorly discounted it was meant to be so much more than that and we were like i can't believe we just spent 360 pound on one gown yeah but oh my god and was it worth it? a million times over but now we see a dress for 360 pound like oh my god buy two <laughs> <laughs> yeah what a bargain <laughs> <laughs> or we go i wouldn't even dream of paying 360 pound for a dress for myself no never but, but then for client to wardrobe i'm yeah. like oh that's cheap we love two dresses today oh and like now we've got somebody making us a uh, a one-off bespoke gown yeah. because we've we've bought the designers and we've got all of the fabulous gowns but we want something different now don't we and, and, and there was nothing on the market that fitted what we had in our vision hmm. and this we had photos through yesterday oh my god it's fitting our vision yeah it is it's exactly what we drew i mean it's not exactly what we drew because abigail can't draw but <laughs> like it's exactly what i had in my head when i was drawing hmm. Hmm. it's very exciting it is the fact that we've got like gone from buying cheap naff things like really so low quality to now design their own gowns I know. is ridiculous and it has taken time and it's oh, 11 and years it's, i've been doing it like yeah, it, it and is like it's so much effort that we put into everything that we do to be able to to get to this level mm. and we get it like you can't just go straight in and be buying you know 600 pound gowns like no. it's not doable but if you can hold off and save and save and buy that one I've also piece. got a I got a sub tip <laughs> okay um join the VIP groups for all yes. the designers because we are in a few um of those groups and they always run sales yeah just to those groups um and there's like it's not just like oh I have a fiver off it's like hundreds of pounds off it is yeah um you they'll be ready to sell gowns that are in specific colors and specific yes. sizes because they've made too many or somebody cancelled an order or whatever but it's still worth being well, on there. Pre-sale, when they've designed a new gown and before it gets launched yeah. onto their website, you get it to discounted yeah, rate. Yeah, so they got images to use. Yeah, for their yeah. website and it's stuff. It's always worth doing. Oh yeah, 100%. All the VIP groups we're in, are we? Yeah. Love it. Tip number four, I would say, is prepare your clients' expectations. Um, I know a lot of people watch our Instagram and YouTube and whatever else, see like all these lovely locations and the, the clients pause in and think, oh my God, it's lovely. And it's all kind of, I don't even know where I was going with that. Daisies <laughs> and rainbows and whatever, flowers and rainbows. Um, but it's quite strenuous. Like, yeah, we are not going to post like the, the bits where we're like, oh, and like the client needs a break or needs a snack or needs a bit of water. Yeah. Like we don't post that on Instagram, obviously the bits that you see behind the scenes on Instagram obviously different when we do in actual vlogs but just the little snippety bits of behind the mm. scenes on like our instagram reels and that it is going to be all the nice floaty bits and them looking gorgeous posed in the position and you know yeah. but that's not it is the reality of it but a very small snippet of the reality yeah. of it i shoot very fast and it's literally pause duh, 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 stop have a break and then we have like five ten minutes and then we get into the next pause and then it's shoot for like two seconds and then we have another break like it's a lot of not hanging about it's a lot of resting and while they are resting we're working out what we're doing next we're setting up the lights we're moving the camera my camera's in my hand I'm not on a tripod but like we're moving everything around and yeah. getting everything set up ready usually Christy's in front of the camera pausing to make sure my lighting's right <laughs> and um, I'm gonna get a profile pic where <laughs> we are <aren't> I? <laughs> um yeah it's a lot of for them resting and waiting around and a, a lot less of what you see on Instagram they are very very short snippets and what the, they what you need to drum into your clients is you've got to be we always tell them to bring flat comfortable shoes that they yeah. can just slide off because if we're on location you've got to walk and potentially got to walk quite far I mean we'll always tell you how far you got to walk just to make sure you can do it but like if we're on a beach for example you've got to you can't just park on a beach you've got to park in a car park walk to the beach if we're on a cliff on that beach like it's always something you've got to kind of get around Usually they're quite accessible places just because I can't get to a lot. I like I can't climb mountains and whatever. Yeah, we always try and do a recce wherever possible. Obviously it doesn't happen when we're in foreign countries, but in, in the UK we all always do a recce of, of yeah. where we're gonna shoot. And I mean if you can get there then yeah. Nine so times out of good ten. Kind of yeah, we can get a, a pregnant person there, can't we? So yeah. um yeah, so but it's just setting their expectations. Bring some shoes because you're probably gonna walk. This is how far you're gonna walk. Um, 
like you bring snacks for breaks we always like have a few snacks and bottles of water in our car anyway just in case they forget but like bring them because you will need the energy yeah. it doesn't feel it doesn't look like a lot on on social media but you will be knackered after it so you need to be bringing your energy levels up and everything else um yeah and it's just setting those expectations early so they've got a chance to prepare themselves and set themselves up for it will make a massive difference in the end because if i turned up heavily pregnant to a location and they told me oh yeah you're gonna be wearing like heeled shoes on this location and um you're gonna be wearing this dress blah 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 and they didn't tell me to, we didn't tell them to bring shoes i'd be tamping that i'd have to take my heels off and walk somewhere and be yeah. footed or whatever if i didn't know i had to walk somewhere and then there's a long walk in front of me i'd be tamping with that like if I didn't know to bring snacks because I didn't know how long it was going to be, like everything, those little tiny little bits of information all add up into your client experience again, which is like what we're always saying, client's experience is key. It all builds into something that can either make or break that session. Absolutely. They're either going to leave going, oh, I was prepared for all the, the down um, downtime and the whatever else, slightly negative parts of the set. They're not negative, but like no. the not so f- much fun parts. And I really enjoyed the the fun parts then because I knew what to expect with the the negative parts. So, um, yeah, just whereas if it was the other yeah. way around and you didn't expect those, and then you were st- sat on the side of a cliff, waiting round and yeah, and a maternity session is only an hour. So like, yeah. you'd think, oh, I'm only there an hour. I want to take you know snacks or or water or whatever. Like it's only an hour, but what you don't think about is however long it's taken to have somebody come and do your hair and makeup beforehand mm. and the fact that you had to leave your house at whatever time to get to a salon to do that or whether you're having make, hair and uh, makeup done with us yeah. like you have to get there earlier again yeah. and how many times have, have clients turned up and gone oh, I skipped breakfast didn't have time because I had to go and get my hair and makeup done yeah. first I'm like right sit for there and eat biscuits yeah. and we forced them to sit down and eat something yeah. before we even left the car I mean, 30 minutes out my pocket, you well. <laughs> Have some sugar. <laughs> I do not let Christy give 30 minutes to customers. <laughs> no, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Um, yeah, and it's like getting changed on location. Like half the time, these the, the locations clients pick are like the middle of nowhere, so we've got to take a change in tent and getting dressed in a massive big gown yeah. in a tiny little change in tent which is not ideal but it is what it is like if you want to do those locations that's the kind of thing you've got to do like that takes a lot of effort yeah so just make, making sure they're wear, wearing something that's easy to just kind of pull over their head so that you can yeah. just get in and out of a gown easily yeah all of these things make a difference and like as much as like I, I'm a, a preparer and I like wherever yeah. I go no matter what I'm doing whenever I leave the house I am prepared for like every eventuality but I mean, you were not. So, like, we are very different people. Mm. And, like, you were just winging it, weren't you? Ah, don't worry, it's going to be a shop somewhere. Yeah, they'll be in Asda somewhere in the UK. <laughs> yeah, so, like, we need to make sure we're preparing everybody so everybody is well prepared when they turn up, not just, ah, there'll be something there. And we'll turn up somewhere that's, you know, in the middle of nowhere. They haven't yeah. got a shop for miles and yeah. they're without water. And I mean, a good, I'm a good preparer when it comes to other people. Yeah. It's just for myself. I'm like, ah, I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure I'll dig around my car and find something. Ew. <laughs> not to eat. I've seen you a car. There's no digging around for anything in there, Abigail. There's a lot in my car. You have to wipe your feet the way out. <laughs> Taking somebody with you is always a good point as well. If they need somebody for a bit of support, yeah. whether that be carrying their bags, because that's what a lot of husbands or partners tend to do, don't they? They come yeah. along and carry the bags. They'll um, jump in for one or two photos and then they chief bag carrier. They are, yeah. Um, and just having another pair of hands. Like, if we are in a, a location that's like on the side of a cliff or or whatever then. in Paris we, we we couldn't leave our bags because there was just like people everywhere yeah. and like we were next to the Eiffel Tower which is notorious for pickpockets and we had all of our equipment and bags and she had all her stuff and we were like what on earth are we going to do for th- with this and then the husband ended up being cheap bag carrier and he added it all for yeah. us <laughs> um, and just to have them to have an arm to hold on to when we're going you know mm. around from from one spot to another on location and yeah, because usually you've got the back of the dress like you're a bridesmaid. Yeah. And then the husband's got the arm. Yeah. Mm. And just a bit of moral support in it. Yeah, because sometimes... The it's just the first the time. Yeah, it's the first time they've ever done something like that. And it kind of takes a little while to get into it, doesn't it? Yeah. Especially if you are not if you don't like being in front of the camera. And all of our clients always leave and saying how fabulous they felt and how yeah. it was a, an amazing experience. I don't think we've ever had anything any different than that. But, yeah. like... 
we've perfected it now, I think, haven't we? So our last point, I think, is maternity isn't an add-on. Like, for so many years, I put maternity as an add-on to a newborn session. Do you to tell everyone how much you should charge as an add-on? £30. Sometimes you do it for free. Oh, my God. <laughs> Depending on how I felt on the day. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, do you want to bump a photo with that? Yeah, go on. They come in, have a quick photo. Go on. Go on, 30 quid. Check a bump a photo on. Yeah. <laughs> like, looking back at it, it makes me cringe, but... Like, I didn't... Like, I had never been pregnant, so I didn't really... Mm. And it haven't been the norm to do it, though, have No, nobody, nobody was really doing maternity photography to any sort of, like, high-end um, means, I think was the word I was looking for. Um, so, yeah, it was always just, oh, yeah, I've just added on. But, like, now, I don't know, I can't remember really where the mindset changed. I wasn't, like, it must have been having my own kid. I don't really know. It's like, but something All of a happened sudden just changed. And it me. was, why is nobody talking about this? Like, why are we not celebrating the fact that our bodies are doing this? And it probably was actually having a baby, thinking about it, or just getting in the circles of the age group of people that were having children and whatever, and being like around the people of that we want to celebrate women and uplift women and everything else came along the same time as that. And it's just, why isn't, why was it hidden? Like, it's just... In my head, that's absolutely ridiculous now. Yeah, it's daft, isn't it? Like, for all these years, like, you wear a big smock dress and you cover a pregnancy and you hide it. Why Why hide it? Like, everybody knows you're pregnant. Yeah. Like, why are we not celebrating the fact that, like, your body is doing that? Like, you're, you're making a child. Yeah, it's a miracle. And also, like, well, it's just, just it's the whole thing of celebrating women in this. Yeah. People haven't, it's always been a society kind of thing where people didn't celebrate women yeah. and right now it's like not such a taboo subject it's kind of everyone's broken through those walls and it's like no we're gonna yeah I'm gonna take some big bougie photos of me while pregnant why not yeah and uh, like it should be I just say this all the time it should be as celebrated as your wedding like and I know it's, your wedding's one day blah blah blah, blah but why is bringing a life into the world not as important as marrying someone? Yeah. Or like not everybody marries somebody because it's like a very, tra- well, it's not a very traditional thing, but it's just one of them things that it's been done for so many years that people just get married now just because they're supposed to, they're supposed to get like, married. It's not... The av- average wedding cost in the UK, like the, the when I was, do- I mean, it's been a long time since I was doing weddings, but, but back like when I was doing weddings 10 years ago, the average cost of a of a UK wedding back then was £24,000. That's got to be nearing 30 grand now. Got oh, to be. Easy. Like people will spend like 30, upwards of 30 grand. That's just like the average. People spend like mm. so much money on one day and they have... Obviously, fantastic photos to celebrate that. Mm. Like, that should be happening when you're creating a child. Yeah. I love a wedding just as much as the next person. Yeah. But, like, you're creating a life. Mm. You're not signing a piece of paper. You're creating a life. And that, like, your body is producing an actual miracle. Mm. And that should be, like, celebrated and documented and, like, go big. Like, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. I am. It, don't do it as an add on like me. For so many yeah, years. Please don't offer as an add-on. Like it isn't. I've made the mistake for you. There you go. <laughs> it's an actual. It's a full session. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be an add-on to something else. It shouldn't be a little mini session. Oh, go on, just have a quick picture of your bump. I'll do it with a free view. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I can't believe it. Oh my god, it's gonna be twitches. Um, yeah, it absolutely needs to be. An entire session of its own right. You need to put just as much effort into that as you do for whatever else you shoot. Yeah. That, that, that's nine months of your life that will absolutely fly by and you will forget 90% of it. Like, yeah. I can't remember having a bump. Like, yeah. it's mental. And if I didn't have photos documenting that, like, I would be absolutely devastated because there's just... It's just such a short period of time. Yeah. But it's such a important well it's like the most important part of your of your life i could go on about that for hours could, yeah. <laughs> i'm very passionate about it i don't know where the tides turned but it happened but yeah so don't do it as an add-on do it as a full session give it the like the attention it needs yeah and the effort it needs and if we take anything from this episode it's please do not offer it as a 30 pound add-on or i'll go on have a picture of your bump and i'll check it on for free please do not do that <laughs> i didn't word it like that did i well, more Probably. or less <laughs> 
Um, so this episode's question um, has been sent through and it's something that we get asked quite a bit actually isn't mm. it um, basically what equipment we use so the camera and, and kind what of what equipment we use Christy all right I know <laughs> we use Canon I know yeah. it's a Canon camera so at the moment um, we use a Canon R5 I use a Canon R5 um, with a just a standard 24 205 millimeter lens f4 that's my go-to lens and it, I know so many, like that would make so many photographers eyes twitch because I don't use a prime lens every single day. And we did say that we weren't going to talk technical on this thing, but I think it's worth just noting that it's just a kit lens. Like it's a good kit lens, mm. but it's a kit lens. But it's an all rounder for me because I don't want to be changing lenses and going back and forth. And like, I know that I can get the majority of what I need out of that lens without changing it. On like a maternity load location shoot or whatever. And that's a big thing for us in it, not having to carry a lot of equipment because yeah. you can't. No. So it does the job. It like, does, yeah. It does more than the job. Like it's fabulous. Um, with that then, I also use a 35mm 1.8. All Canon, like yeah. um, specific lenses. Not specific, they're made by Canon. Um, because that's for newborns. Yeah. Um, just for those lovely close up with nice depth of field like the little blurry backgrounds and ever it just creates a lovely soft focus kind of um feel um and that really elevated our work actually just yeah. changing to that one lens for newborns because um it was just missing something you know um work wasn't yeah. it so um yeah for newborns i tend to use a 35 millimeter for um anything else like family portraits or um, going out on location or maternity or whatever, I use the 24 to 105 for ease. can get a bit of everything out of that. And yeah, sorry to get technical. That's a, the tech, That's the most technical you'll ever get you and me be. I've even had to write down the numbers on a sheet in front of me because I can't <laughs> remember numbers. And we did say that we were never ever going to get technical. But I think that's that's not like uber technical, is it? That's just... No, that's just the... That's what we use. Yeah. When I say we, I mean Abigail, because I don't touch the camera. Yeah, so Canon R5. It. And I've only just changed, I've only just changed that R5. Yeah. Like, I, that's my first ever mirrorless camera. Mm. Because I, like, I hesitated for so long. I just didn't want to change. I knew what I knew and I didn't want to change that. But I love it. Mm. It's worked wonders. And it's so much lighter. <laughs> which have saved my shoulder a million times so yeah r5 canon 105 no 24 see i told you i'd forget the numbers <laughs> number dyslexia i got everyone laughs at me for it, but i have got number dyslexia dyscalculia if you will um 24 to 105 f4 and a 35 millimeter 1.8 thank you for watching this episode i hope you have enjoyed um if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. And if you are already a subscriber, click the little bell button so that you get notified every time we upload a new episode. It really helps. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Mother, baby and us.